Today on Logan Lee Adventures is packed with epic views which mythologies are made of as well as unexpected kindness from strangers and a fearless venture to further deep our journey into the Sultanate. The spirit of travel, whether that be by car, bike, train, walking, it's anything that can make the journey a destination itself. That includes our road trip through Oman, the stunning gem country in the Arabian Peninsula. Misfat Al Abarin is an authentic living Omani village that's made out of mud and huge rock slabs built into the mountainside and the village is yet to be touched by the heavy hand of tourism so you can still get the serene and quietness as one would when you're out here there's little trail marks all around the village so you can find your way walking in this beautiful paradise as you can see, Misfat is made out of mazes of shaded pathways, open terraces. Whew. It is stunning out here. Houses here uses these huge rock slabs as a foundation and they're built towering on top of each other. But the cool thing is that they all look like they blend effortlessly into the mountainside. Does it look like a well? It's not water anymore. Oh. Jackal stones just top on top of one of another. That's how they built this whole place. With mud in between. Goats. They're so adorable, but I'm also a little hungry, so I can think of this yummy mutton. Little peaceful spots in Oman. So this here is an example of a wadi and a wadi is kind of like a riverbed that could be dry during some seasons but usually can be mostly wet and comes from the rain during the rain season that gets filled up but this wadi right here is a runoff from the Misfa little village that we were up in the mountains so the mountains would have like the water and then it would go to Misfa the village and then it would come all the way down here. Beautiful reflection too. Continuing our road trip to throughout the Sultanate of Oman and stop out and look at this cool viewpoint because you see how just lush and green this part is and then it looks like these abandoned little village ruins just far in the distance and we're in this nook of these mountains with some rug sellers in the back on another lovely beautiful day Today it looks more mountainous than ever in Omani. Like the mountains are really high. It's going to be Jebel Shems today, which is the name of the mountains here where we are at. And it's really, really picturesque green as well. So I just want to show you the clouds just hanging up top right there. It's like a cotton candy cloud just over those mountains. 
drive is becoming really, really steep now, and the mountains are becoming more looming out of the distance. Hey, can you handle it, Hussy? I can. <laughs> The drive up to Jebel Shams in a two-wheel drive is precarious, especially in our rental car. We didn't drive any faster than 20 kilometers per hour at many points toward the latter half of the journey, but we were determined to explore Oman's highest mountain, the Mountain of the Sun, at 3,009 meters. You can feel how much you're like stepping into this thing. Yeah. And your car will, the wheels will start slipping. Even I'm slipping as I'm walking down. So we parked our car just right up the road there because to a point, all of this is sand that we're going down. And he said going down is fine with the car. Going down is fine, but with the two wheel drive and especially like the basic two wheel drive that we have. Yeah. Getting back up here is quite steep and yeah. it's quite sandy and we will definitely not get back up. So we parked our car, but we saved it, sorry. It's a very good decision you did. Yeah, I'm very happy now while walking here while I see him sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like wearing my white sense sense sneakers, like just gliding down this mountain. <laughs> but we are on top of the Shabo Shams and we're on top of a mountain, so if we get stuck and we're actually really screwed because the car's not insured and there's nobody around. So there's no hitchhiking even if we want to hitchhike. <laughs> Having said that, look at this spectacular view. It really feels like we're on top of the world. This is the balcony block. And I think the name explains it itself. If you can hear me over the gusts of wind, this is Javel Shams. We made it. And Javel Shams is the highest mountain in all of Oman. It is considered the Grand Canyon of Arabia. Jebel Shams actually means Sun Mountain in Arabic and it was named that way because of this is the highest mountain here it is perceived that where the sunrise would first rise and touches the land. We're starting a trek on the balcony walk now. What you doing? Ah. Water break with our friendly girls. <laughs> they look so funny with their goofy eyes. how hairy they are. <laughs> this is the rim of the Grand Canyon of Arabia. And you can really see why it's nicknamed that because of all these dropping cliffs right there. It's magnificent. We're in the Middle East, so there's no such thing as fencing off. So any one little slip and whoop, that's it. All the way to the bottom. Oh, it looks like a, what used to be a wadi down there, but the riverbed dried up. It's 
so peaceful and quiet here. Imagine being a Bedouin and the nomadic tribes that used to travel these lands, and then being here as they are setting up camp, traveling across this Arabian land night and day after night and day, but being the first one to set your eyes on all of this, just, it's phenomenal. Look, there's even a watch out for a camel sign. Typical Middle East. The room pointed out that there's even a football court right down there in the wadis. So I guess during rain season, all of this, including the football court, will be flooded. But when it's dry like right now, you can see that there's, there's no players right now, but there are goats manning the goalie post. golden hour just before the sun fully sets and the dust of Arabia is settling down from the day of kicking up the dirt and the special thing about this hour is that not only everything has this golden pink light to it but the mountains is illuminated by the sun okay I'm going to show you what I mean We're at this beautiful, dimly lit restaurant. Look at this magnificent place. So the story is, is that we were driving and we got actually got lost because we got recommended this place by our host. And then a Omani man drove up next to us. I'm just gonna sit down at this table. And an Omani man drove up next to us and then we scrolled down our window, He's like, do you need help? And we're like, yeah, actually we can't find this place. And then he drove us, he was like, okay, follow me. And then we cartailed him to the original restaurant that we wanted to have dinner at. But then he's like, oh, I also know this other traditional Omani food restaurant that I think you may like if you want to check it out. So you just know the address and we're like, yeah, sure. So. We drove me another two minutes away and we found this beautiful restaurant serving traditional Omani food in different buffet style. So it's heat up in the, from this clay pot and we're gonna grab a few dishes. It only costs about 12 euros per person, which is really affordable for buffet. And on top of that, we're gonna sit up in this spacious place and you can kind of see the gorgeous mountains of Oman in the distance. All right, let's grab some food. We have dates here. We have, look at this nice hummus. And we also have, what's in here? <gasps> oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, it's like all these grilled type of chicken with some Beautiful flower carrots and cucumbers. Mm. Okay, let's dig in, Hasi. Yeah, can't wait. Ooh, there's some type of beef stew here. Get me some of that. thing about traditional Omani food is, is that it's really hard to find in a restaurant because if Omanis are going to eat traditional food, they're just going to eat at home because they can cook it themselves. So it's really rare to get 
a good traditional Omani restaurant. But at Al Akur, this restaurant that our random friend helped recommend us from the side of the road is so delicious. So I was looking at the maps, but I couldn't really find the right uh, place. Then this For the original restaurant? Yeah, so yeah. this random, random person stopped in his car and it was like, um, where do you need to go? And normally, like, in any country you're hesitant. After, like, lots of trouble, you get a little skepti skeptical about people actually want to help. Yeah. And normally they always want something from you. Um, but, of course, trying to stay open-minded, so I was like, well, we need to get to this restaurant. I was saying the wrong restaurant and we were following him after. I was and like, that's not the right restaurant. That's so he, not the right restaurant. So he gave me his thing guy. <laughs> so I said, what an adventure. And then he was like, okay, okay. Yeah, and I was like, like all right, sure. <laughs> but moral of the story, it's actually true what they say about the Middle East. People are very hospitable, and very helpful, and very kind. So kind and oh my gosh, just so generous and just so welcoming and they are just so curious about where you're from where you're going and they can help out in any way and people just want to get to know you and people here aren't jaded like how i guess i am as a north american or how we can be when we're in europe because we always have the mentality of like if someone's approaching you then they may want something from you or they may like trying to get something out of this but here people are just generally curious and they and if you're lost like we were they just actually want to help out.